the first law of thermodynamics. So this is often stated um, sort of in jest as there is no free lunch. So just a reminder, thermodynamics is the study of energy and its interconversions. And so the, the first law of thermodynamics is the law of conservation of energy, which says that the total amount of energy in the universe is constant. So you can't destroy energy, but you can't create it either. So you can never create a system that will just provide energy without using energy. So you cannot get something for nothing with energy. And that's what they mean by there's no free lunch. So state functions. Um, Let's, let's just define them, and um, hopefully it'll become more apparent later why, why this matters. Um, a state function is something that um, only the initial position and the final value matter. How you got there doesn't matter. So if you talk about a change in elevation, here we're looking at this mountain, and people are going to climb to the top of the mountain, and you can take path A, which you know snakes back and forth like most trails do, and it's 12 miles to get to the top of a mountain, which is you know 10,000 feet elevation. Or you can take path B, which goes straight up the mountain. It's only five miles, right? But that's a really hard five miles. So if you take path A, the distance you travel is 12 miles. If you take path B, the distance you travel is five miles. But the change in elevation is the same, regardless of which path you took, right? You started down here at sea level and you get to the top and it's 10,000 feet. The way I would prefer to get to the top of that mountain is I'd have a helicopter come land over here and I get in the helicopter and they take me up and over and down and set me on top of the mountain, right? Same elevation change though from beginning to end. And that's what a state function is. It does not depend on how you got there, only the beginning and the end. Yeah? So now you said that it's not really a helicopter, so I think you know, just for instance, there's always like a change as well. Like you will have to when you climb it up you're letting your body breathe the air and then mm -hmm. Um, that 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 could be a problem, I suppose. Um, as you're as you're going up the mountain, that's going to take some time, and you'll have a little more chance to become accustomed to the the lower oxygen. Um, whereas in an, in a, a helicopter, that change would be much more sudden. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Pardon me. I don't think so. I, I'm not. I'm not really sure though. No. So, so change in elevation depends only on beginning and ending values, um, but distance traveled depends on how you chose to travel there, right? So, talking about energy, um, we can talk about the internal energy of a system. And this is the, the total of kinetic and potential energy that the particles in that system have. And the system, of course, is whatever we define it to be. That the particles in the system have a certain amount of energy that includes kinetic and potential energy. And the total of that is called the internal energy, or just E. So this internal energy is a state function. So its value only depends on where it is now and not how it got there. So if we're going to look at the change in internal energy, we can just look at the final energy minus the initial energy. Just like with elevation, it doesn't matter how the change occurred. We're just going to look at the final and the initial. And so this triangle here, that's a capital Greek delta. And um, in science, that means change in. So this is the change in internal energy. 
And that is always the final state minus the initial state. So like with the elevation, if your final state was, um, was 1,000 feet, I'm sorry, 10,000 feet, and your initial state was zero feet, then the change in elevation would be positive 10,000 feet. If you did it the other way around and did the initial minus final, then you'd have a change in elevation that's negative 10,000 feet, which suggests that you're going down, right? So it's always the final minus the initial. So the change in energy is equal to the final energy minus the initial energy. So in chemical systems, um, the reactants are the initial state and the products are the final state. And so we can look at the change in energy for a given chemical reaction as the energy that the products have minus the energy that the reactants had. So this is an energy diagram which tells us about energy changes. And it's a lot like an altitude diagram for a climb. And so here, things that are higher in the diagram like they would be higher in altitude are higher in energy, and things that are lower are lower in energy. So for this chemical reaction, carbon and oxygen reacting to form CO2, the reactants, carbon and oxygen, have higher internal energy than the product does, the carbon dioxide. So you take this small number for the product and you subtract the larger number from the reactants, and you get a negative change in energy. So the energy went down. So here's your system. The change in energy for that system is negative. That means that energy left, right? That energy has to go somewhere. Where does it go? It goes to the surroundings. So the change in energy for the surroundings then has to be positive. And this is where energy is a lot like money. So the system here is spending money and the surroundings are gaining money and the money is like energy. Okay, anybody have any questions? Here we have um, this, wait a minute got lost. Okay, it's the same picture. Um, so the reactants had more energy than the products. Energy is lost by the system. So we say that the delta E for the system is negative. The energy lost by the system is gained by the surroundings. So we can see delta E surroundings is positive. So the change in energy for the surroundings and the system are the same value, but one's positive and one's negative, right? If I'm gonna sell you this calculator for $20, you give me $20, so it's negative $20 on your financial account, and it's positive $20 on my account, right? It's the same number, and, and I, we could do the transaction back and just swap the $20 again. Any questions about that? When we look at an equation like this, this does not mean that E system is negative. This is negative one times the value of the change in energy. If I took this and I multiplied both sides by negative one, then I'd end up with negative delta E surroundings is equal to positive delta E system. So it's not telling me that one is negative and one's positive. It's telling me that they are opposite in sign. Whatever the surroundings is, if that's negative, I'm sorry, that's, yeah. If that one's negative, the other one's positive. If this one's positive, the other one's negative. Here we have the reaction reversed. So instead of making carbon dioxide, we're taking carbon dioxide and decomposing it into its elements, carbon and oxygen. 
Well, carbon and oxygen still have higher internal energy than carbon dioxide does because that's not dependent on anything related to this problem we're talking about. That just is what it is. So carbon dioxide has lower energy, but now the carbon dioxide is the reactant. We're starting down here and we're going up there. So if we look at the final energy, which is this higher one, and subtract the lower one, now we get the change in energy is positive. So this is like when you're selling something, money comes into your account, right? The previous example, you're paying, and, and here the money's coming in. So the system is gaining energy. Where does the energy come from? The energy comes from the surroundings. So again, the, the number is the same. They are opposite in sign. In this situation, the energy of the surroundings is negative because energy came out of it. So the sign for energy change goes just like money. Like, so if I look at my, you know, my bank balance, if money goes out of my account, it says minus something, right? And the, the balance gets smaller. If money comes in, then that's positive and it goes up. Same thing with the energy. We're talking about the system, money, com money. <laughs> energy coming in is, is a positive change. Energy going out is a negative change. Okay. So if we have reactants with higher energy than the products, then the system is losing energy. Energy flows out of the system and into the uh, surroundings. If, it's, uh, if the reactants are lower in energy than the products, then we have a, a positive change in energy and energy is coming in. So energy is like money. The system is like your bank account. Money leaving your account is a withdrawal, that's negative. Money entering your account is a deposit, that's positive. Because these things, it's, it's very easy to get confused about which one's positive and which one's negative. And so we tend to remember things that have to do with money. Well, consider these fictional internal energy gauges that describe the initial conditions for a chemical system and its surroundings. So here we're starting with the chemical system is like three quarters of a tank and the surroundings is one quarter of a tank. And now it's giving us three different options, A, B, and C, and saying which energy gauges correspond to the final conditions following an energy change in which, in which delta E for the system is negative. So if I am the system and I'm experiencing a negative transaction, am I gaining money or losing money? I'm losing money, right? It's negative, right? It's going out. Same thing with the energy. So here, this energy change is negative, meaning the system is losing energy. So we can look at these different options and say, well, let's look at this one. So here, um, the chemical system got smaller by a quarter tank, and the surroundings went up by a quarter tank. So is that consistent with the system losing energy? Yeah, it is. That one's actually looking really promising. Then let's look at B. So here, the system lost energy, right? The system lost energy, but the surroundings didn't gain any energy. So this is like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm paying someone, there's $10 going out, and then poof, it got annihilated. Nobody got it. That's not how money works, right? Unless maybe you're doing Bitcoin or something, <laughs> but that's not real. Um, and then here's this one where the, um, the chemical system went up and the surroundings went down. Well, this is the, the system getting a positive change, right? It's getting more full and this is being negative. So this is the opposite of what we're talking about. Right? So this one is what happens when we have a negative change in energy for the system. 
Any questions? So energy is the capacity to do work. Um, energy can be exchanged between the system and the surroundings. It can also be transformed from one form to another, like kinetic to potential or vice versa. The way that energy is exchanged is through one, one of two processes, well actually you can do both of them, um, is through heat and work. Okay, So heat is exchanging um, energy based on temperature difference. We've got thermal energy flowing from the warmer object to the colder object. And work is where a force is being applied to something and moving it through a distance. So those are two different ways that you can transfer energy and they can go either direction. The system can transfer to the surroundings by heat or the surroundings can transfer to the system. So heat is um, given the symbol Q, don't know why. Um, work is W, that kind of makes sense, right? So Q and W are not state functions. They are like distance traveled. It matters how you went. It's not just the final and initial positions. They're not state functions. But the total change in internal energy is the sum of Q and W. So if we look at the sum of Q and W together, we have a state function. So here are the sign conventions. Q um, being positive means the system is gaining thermal energy. Q being negative, losing thermal energy. So that's the same we've been talking about, gaining and losing energy. W is work. So if W is positive, that means work is done on the system, or you could say work done for the system. And negative is work done by the system. So if we think of the work here as a massage, right? So if I'm giving someone else a massage, I'm working on them, right? I'm giving the massage, so that's negative. The person who's getting the massage feels very positive about things, right? Because, oh, that feels so good, right? They are getting something done for them, okay? And change in energy, we've talked about this energy going into the system is positive. Energy flowing out of the system is negative. Again, put the word money in there for energy and it's not too hard to remember. So back to these balls on the pool table. We talked about this with the uh, cue ball was moving and it comes over here and it hits this purple ball and then the purple ball starts moving and the, the white ball just sits there. So what's going on here? So this white ball initially started out with five joules of energy. As it rolls across the table, because this is a real table and not an imaginary table, there is some friction, right? When you roll a ball, it's going to start slowing down, right? If it's a good pool table, you might not really be able to notice, but that ball will not roll forever on a flat surface, right? Because there's friction. So friction results in heat. So, you know, if you rub your hands together, right, it starts to feel warm, right? So that's a friction. It's, I grew up in the Midwest, and sometimes you gotta do that while you're waiting for the bus, because it's really cold. So this is not anything that we notice. We don't notice a ball ran, you know, across the table, and we feel it, and ooh, that's hot, right? It's just a little tiny bit. But the ball is losing energy as heat to the table. When it hits the other ball, now it's doing work on the other ball, right? It's pushing, it's exerting a force through a distance on this. And so the kinetic energy at the collision here that the white ball has is four and a half joules because it lost half a joule as it was rolling across the table, okay? When it hits the ball, it gives all of its kinetic energy to the other ball, and now it's left with zero. The work that it did was four and a half joules 
on the other ball. So the work was negative four and a half joules for our white ball that's our system. It lost, um, and, and heat was negative 0.5 joules. It lost 0.5 joules rolling across the table. It lost four and a half joules striking the other ball. And so the total change is negative five joules. The final energy is zero minus the initial energy of five is negative five. How much energy is gained by the system? Five joules, because energy lost by the system is gained by the surroundings, so the surroundings gain five joules. Um, but some of that is, is in the table, and some of that is kinetic energy in the purple ball. But the ball and the table are all part of the surroundings. Any questions? So let's look at an abused pool table. This one has a, a rougher surface. Maybe it's old, beat up. So starting out with the same thing, the white ball with five joules of kinetic energy, as it rolls across the table, because the surface is rough, it's going to experience more friction and it's going to slow down more. It's going to lose more energy, right? So here it's losing three joules of energy rolling across this rough surface. And if you think about like rolling a tennis ball on the sidewalk versus rolling it on the grass, right? You give it the same sort of a shove, it's going to roll really nicely on the smooth concrete and in the grass it's not going very far, right? Because of the friction. So it loses three joules of energy as it rolls across the table and now it only has two joules left to transmit to the other ball. So if we look at the total here, there was negative two joules of work that this white ball did on the purple ball and there was negative three joules of heat. That's what it lost as it came across. The total change in energy though is the same, it's negative five joules. So the total energy change is the same for the smooth table and the rough table, but Q and W are not the same because they do depend on how that thing happened. Any questions? So delta E, is the same for both of those cases, Q and W are not, because delta E depends, it's a state function, depends only of, on the velocity of the ball before and after the collision. Q plus W is the same for both table, tables, even though the individual values of Q and W are different. So let's apply this. A cylinder and piston assembly, and we're defining that as the system, is warmed by an external flame. The contents of the cylinder expand, doing work on the surroundings by pushing the piston outward against the external pressure. If the system absorbs 559 joules of heat and does 488 joules of work during the expansion, what is the value of delta E? Well, let's do the same thing we've been doing all semester and highlight our numbers here and then highlight the question. We want to know what delta E is. So there's an equation for delta E. The change in energy is the sum of the heat exchanged and the work. So here it says the system absorbs 559 joules of heat. So Q is 559 joules. We're talking about the system here. Is that going to be positive or negative? Is it coming to the system or leaving? It's being absorbed, right? It's going into the system. So this is positive. And we don't need a plus sign there, but I'm going to put a plus sign there just to kind of emphasize that we, we thought about it and that's positive, not just that we didn't bother doing anything. And then we have W, and it says W is 488 joules, and it says the system does work. Is negative? Negative. Now think about you doing work for someone else. How do you like that? 
maybe not so great. Somebody else doing work for you, yay, right? Bring it. So here, the system is doing work, so that's negative. So the change in energy for this system is the sum of these two things. So we've got 559 joules and negative 448 joules. So 559 minus, oops, come on, 559 minus 488. So 71 joules. Overall, the system gained 71 joules. Any questions? It's, it's so much like money. But, but our brain says, energy, what? And we have a hard time getting our brain around it and remembering stuff. Just think of the energy like money. Okay, money coming in, money going out. 